One of the most com important components of a standard library is the collections. You can have types like just an int or a double or a string that represent one value, but the real benefit of computers comes in when you have a lot of them, and you want to represent those by collections. And so you need to have the ability to represent uh, collections and then operate on them in order to do interesting things with your programming language. Scala happens to have some wonderful collection libraries. They are all located inside of Scala.collection, uh, not surprisingly. And we're going to deal just with two of these real quick in this video. Those are arrays and lists. And we're actually just going to start off even with just those two. This is a fairly large topic. So the first thing we want to do is talk about how we can create them and then use them in the simplest forms. In order to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to go ahead uh, and I'll put it, put it in the code. I could, now let's use a, uh, the REPL. So we'll go ahead and we will open inside of here an interpreter. You can build an array by saying array and then giving it as arguments all the values that you want inside of your array. So these, I'll go with semi-random numbers, like that. You can also build a list in the same way. So let's go with something different just for types. The difference between the array and the list is there are no, two main differences, one of which is mutability. So to get values out of these things, you'll note that my array has the name res0, my list has the name res1. So you can index into both of these. They are zero index, so for example, the thing at index 2, 0, 1, 2, would be the value 7 for our array, and res1 sub 2 would be the y. However, you really should not index into lists this way. Uh, we'll see later how you should operate on lists instead, uh, but you can. Okay, so they're zero indexed and you can index into them. The first major difference is that the array is mutable and the list is not. What does that mean? Well, I can take res zero sub two and I can set it equal to 99. I can do an assignment into, it will not like that typo, into a location, oops, ah, did I have that res zero sub two equals 99, there we go. I can do an assignment into there, everything's happy, and if we look at res zero, my array has been changed. Now one quick thing to, to point out here, let's do val arr equals array, let's build another array of uh, stuff, some integers, arr sub 2 equals 99. It had been a 2, we're going to make it equal to 99, and then we're going to look at arr. Notice this was a val declaration, and when we talked about val versus var, I said that what you can't do with val is you can't assign to them. Indeed, I can't say arr equals and build another array. That won't work because I cannot assign to a val. But the array object itself is mutable. ARR will always point to the same array, but the contents of that array can change. So that's one of the key factors for arrays. Arrays are mutable. You can alter the values that are stored in them. Lists are not. Res1 sub 2 equals z. We get an error and it says there's not an update. Uh, method. Basically you cannot update the values inside of a list. In, in a few chapters we'll actually talk about exactly what this error message means and why it says what it does, but the list once created is completely immutable. Functional languages have a tendency to use immutable data structures. On the other hand, when you have an array, when I create an array of length 5, 
I can change the value stored in the array, but I can't efficiently change the size of the array. I could make a new array of a different size, but it requires copying values over, and there's a lot of work that goes into that. It turns out that with lists, you can very efficiently, so let's recall what our list was, we can very efficiently add a new element to the front of the list. Adding to the end is not efficient, but adding to the front, for example, I could add the character B onto our list, which was res1. This actually gives me a new list. Res1 has not changed. Res11 is a new list, which includes all the contents of res1. So if I'm gonna need something that has a variable length, I will go with with a list. Uh, if I have something that is a fixed length and I need mutability, I'll go with an array. If you pick one for one reason, you decide that, to, that you need the other, it turns out that you can call to array on a list or call to list on an array. So you can easily convert between them. There is a fair bit of work that goes on behind that, so you, it's not something you want to do a lot, but it's not like you're absolutely exclusive with one of them once you've created it. So that's the basic usage as far as the ability to create arrays and lists, index in, and in the case of the array, also do assignment.